So we just talked about variables and declaring variables, but another part of the objective in the UiPath Associate Certification Exam is the fact that you need to not only know the basic variable types, but you also need to understand how variables are scoped in UiPath. And it's actually fairly straightforward. Variables have scope within the process in which they are defined and within the boundaries of the object that defines them and any sub-objects within the container that defines them or any sub-containers. And a container could be something like a sequence, could be a, an if block, could be an exception block, but any kind of block element inside of UiPath. Let's take a look at how that gets defined. So we're talking about scope here. I've actually always been a fan of Listerine. So I'm gonna actually create a new application here. I'm gonna call it Listerine. I'm gonna spell it correctly, create this project. And then I'm gonna create three sequences, which are gonna represent the different blocks of scope in the application. So I'll open the main workflow from the main workflow, I'm gonna click on the activities tab and I'm gonna look for sequence. I'm gonna drag it right onto the workflow there. And I'm gonna name this sequence ancestor. So there's my ancestor. You know what? I'm gonna go down here into the variables tab and I'm gonna create a, a new variable and I'm gonna call this variable Annie. It'll be a string and its default value will be my name is Annie. There we go, we've got that. And you know what, I could even throw in a little message box on top of that and print out that variable Annie. Everything looks good. You can actually see down there in the scope, it says the scope of this variable is the ancestor block. And if I run this, everything runs swimmingly. You can see that all of a sudden it now says, my name is Annie. So, okay, fantastic. Things are working well. Now let's add another sequence. So I'm gonna go down to this activities tab, take a look at the sequences, drag one in under the message box, and I'm gonna name this the parent. And I think I'm going to throw a message box in here. And I'm going to create a variable in the message box. Now, here's another way to create a variable. I use the variables tab, but if you click control K, remember that that's a certification question right there. UiPath associate certification question. What is the shortcut escape sequence to create a variable in UiPath Studio? It's control K. But I'll set the variable here. And I'm going to set this one what we're in the parent. So I'll call this Peter. That now creates a new variable Peter. Now you'll notice that down here it has set the variable name. It's also made the variable type object. I'm not too happy with that. So I'm going to change it to string. But you'll also see that the scope is parent. And so this variable is visible inside the parent. It actually wouldn't be visible outside the parent. So if I put this message box right after Annie, I'd end up with an error. But since it's inside the parent and its scope is parent, life is good. So let's just run this. Let's see how it goes. It should print out, oh, my name is Annie, but you know what? I didn't assign anything to that message box. So it works well, but It works exactly as it was programmed. I actually wanted to print out my name is Peter. So I'll go into that little section there. There we go. My name is Annie from the ancestor. And then my name is Peter from the parent. And you can probably see what's coming next here. Um, we're actually going to add another sequence. And that's going to be inside parent. And we'll call it child one. And it looks like it's time for another message box in here. We'll drop child one in here and control K again. We'll have a variable named Charlie. Change the data type to string. Have its name. My name is Charlie. And it looks like everything is working well right here. I can click debug file and uh, you probably can guess what's going to happen here. My name is Annie from the ancestor, Peter from the parent, Charlie from the child, 
that all looks great. And you know what? I'm going to add one more just to really shake things up. I'm going to add one more sequence. And this sequence is going to be, it's going to be right after the message box. It'll be called child zero, right? We're computer programmers here. So we are do zero based counting and I'll have a message box and the message box control K, I'll create a variable called Chantel. And there we go, that variable is created. I need to set that to be a string and we'll say my name is Chantel. Are we done here? I think we're happy with the way this is working. Do the little run instead of debug file. You can always choose different ones there. My name is Annie. My name is Peter. My name is Chantel and my name is Charlie. So this is all working well. Now, here's the thing. That Annie, that variable is declared in the ancestor. And that variable is actually visible inside the parent and the child as well. Any block inside of that block, Annie is available. So I can actually move this into the parent block and I don't have any compiler errors. And I can move it into child zero and I don't have any compiler errors. And I can move it into child one and I don't have any compiler errors. Okay, so that all looks good, looks interesting to me. And so I haven't changed the scope of Annie Notice Annie still has a scope of ancestor, but it's visible inside of every single block. It's is visible inside the ancestor block, but also any sub block as well. So parent and child. Now contrast that with Peter. Peter declared in the parent has scope in the parent. I can move that into child zero. That works because child zero is inside the parent, but watch this. If I move that to ancestor, all of a sudden I've got an error. And I've got an error because Peter has scope only within the parent block. You can actually see it there. There's Peter, when I highlight the parent block, you can see it declared as scope for parent. But if I actually highlight the ancestor block, you'll actually see it's not even declared, right? Hey, where did it go? Well, it's not declared in that block. And that's what this error message is telling me. So, hey, Peter is not declared here. It's declared in the parent block. So I could always change this. I could go down here and I could say, hey, okay, well, give Peter ancestor scope. And as soon as I do that, the error goes away because now Peter is visible inside the ancestor and parent and child because they're all nested inside of one another. But I don't want to do that. I want to keep uh, the P as a P. So I'll move that down into the parent and then tighten this up again and say, hey, that's got parent scope. Um, similarly, we've got the child scope. So we've got Chantel and Charlie. Uh, Chantel has scope for child zero. So you see that. Charlie has scope for child one. And you can see that there as well. Uh, you'll also notice that visible inside child one is also parent and ancestor. So you can see that in the variables tab there. It's actually keeping tabs on what is visible. Now, one question might be, would Charlie be visible in child zero? Well, you can have a variable declared in a block and it's visible in any sub block or sub component, but child zero and child one, they're sort of at the same level. They're not sub components of each other. They're, they're at that same spot, that same level in the hierarchy. And definitely if an object is declared in child zero, it's not visible in child one. So if I try and move Chantel down from child zero to child one, you get an error. And similarly, if I try and put Charlie into child zero, I'll get an error there as well. Um, so the variable has to be declared in a particular block. If it is, it's then visible in that block and then it's visible in any sub block of that block as well. That's the basic rule for scoping inside of UiPath. Now, let me see if I can get this to work again. I'll move that over there, move this over here, and it looks like all of our problems are gone. And I can even run this file and say, go one, two, three. My name is Peter, my name is Chantel, my name is Charlie, my name is Annie. And there we go. And that's because Annie was moved down to the bottom there. I think 
taking it all back it would even look like that but that gives you an idea of the way that we use scope in UiPath Studio and that's what you need to understand for the UiPath Associate Exam. Now it's also worth noting that all of the different activities will create their own block. So if you were to go in and create your own if block, I typed it there, if block. So if you were to add an if block in here, that if block would have its own scoping rules. So any variable declared inside parent would be visible inside the if block but any variable declared inside the if block would only be visible there. And so what's the best practice and how do you manage these variables? The key is never declare a variable for a greater scope than is necessary. So you could make your life real easy by just declaring everything at the ancestor level in this example, but that now makes that variable visible everywhere. Somebody might accidentally adjust the value inadvertently in, in one of the, the blocks if it's visible. Um, you, know, you can get name conflicts. There's a variety of different problems that happen when you give too much scope. So you wanna encapsulate your code as much as possible, encapsulate your variables, protect them, and that means declaring them as soon as they're needed, but not before, and not giving them scope, not giving them visibility into other blocks that don't need them. So those are the general best practices for managing. One of the other things to mention, a variable declared in one process can't be seen in another process. And so if you want to pass data from one process to another, you're going to need to use arguments. And we'll talk about that a little, a little bit later because that's another UiPath Associate certification objective.